Okay guys, welcome to my course on Actix Web and SQL X. In this video series, we're going to be learning about these two technologies, understanding their architecture and their feature set. But in addition, we're going to learn about how to build fully functional, practical services APIs by cloning the Twitter API and putting into practical use uh, these two technologies. So I welcome you to the course and I hope to see you there. All right, guys, welcome to this first section of the video. And in this first video, we're going to get an overview of Actix Web, sort of uh, take a look at conceptually its architecture. And then we're going to create a very simple service um, just to get a feel for how it works and some of the requirements in getting it set up. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to show you with some pseudocode, just conceptually how it's structured. So at the root level, what's going on is we're going to get this HTTP server that handles all of the things required for the HTTP protocol. And we're going to kind of get it for free. In other words, we don't need to write any significant code at this level all of the capabilities regarding um, handling HTTP is pretty much taken care of for us and we just need to kind of um, initialize it and that's basically it. So this includes all the typical stuff, get, post, put, delete, um, the returning of status codes, the handling of various HTTP headers like content type. So all of that is basically handled for us and we just need to kind of trigger it. Um, the code that we write, the business logic, the route handling, the custom middleware, all of that stuff is living inside of that server um, in something called an app instance. And we'll take a look at in code what that looks like. But basically, this is where we're gonna be living 99% of the time and creating or injecting all of our, our business logic into. So what that looks like in code is, um, well, first of all, we need to kind of switch out the main function a bit because the default behavior of the main function is to be uh, synchronous. So we have to convert the function in order to make the function asynchronous because the, the server is asynchronous. We need to add this simple macro attribute on the top, which internally will give us a distinct Tokyo runtime that our, our service is going to be running inside of. So the runtime provides all of the async capability um, uh, the thread pool from which uh, the services are going to be running off of and um, the performance attributes of Actix Web. So that's why we need this attribute in there. And then to start off the server, we create this service instance, right? Now again, we're not really customizing or doing much of anything as far as this um, service is concerned. We're just initializing it. But the way that we initialize it is, um, so we create a new instance of it, and then we bind it to a tuple, which contains the, which contains the particular IP address that we wanna associate to the server and then whatever the port number that we want to connect it to. And then we have to run it and we have to await on it because as I mentioned, this is an async service after all. So then that's basically all we have to do to get all of the rich uh, HTTP protocol services from Actix Web. So then where we come in as far as um, our code is concerned is 
we create an instance of this application which acts as a logical container for all of our code. So this is going to be our custom middleware. This is going to be any shared global state that we might be using. And then of course, um, the route handlers that we're going to be using as well. So then if we do a very simple example of route handling, um, I can create a route directly to this app instance. Now, once we start building the app, we're not going to do it directly here. And I'll show you why in a moment, but we can, it is possible if we want to keep things simple to put the route directly on the app instance itself. And then we um, indicate the name of the sub route. In this case, we're talking about the root of the application. And then we want to indicate which HTTP verb we are associating our handler to. And then we pass in a function that is the handler. So the handler for this sub route, again, the root for the get verb HTTP is going to be the index function. So then if we were to create this function and let's pretend that it doesn't have um, any parameters and all we want to do is return hello world. Whoops. So all we want to do is return hello world. Then this is literally um, as simple as it gets, like quite trivial in terms of the amount of code that we have to write. So then if I were to build this, you would see hello world, which is what our index was returning. So let's kill that. Now we're going to get into this more deeply soon, but instead of doing that directly, what we're going to be using is this thing called service. And what service is, is a logical container that will allow us to group various pieces of functionality. For example, um, multiple routes that we want to have together and then something called scope. Now scope is very simple. It's another type of container or grouping mechanism, but it allows us to create a label or a sub URL for all of the routes. And I'll just put back the one that we had just created. So, whoops. So it's a grouping mechanism that has a label or a sub URL label that represents um, a group or a set of routes that will live underneath this label. So in this case, because we're already outside of the root, I'm going to put this in here and let's say um, we want to stick it into the profile subroot. So then what, what would the full path look like? It would be, let's say our company name is Acme, then it would be acme.com slash v1 slash profile. And then if someone were to submit a get request, it would trigger this index handler and it would return hello world. So then inside of it, we could additionally do you know the other types of request now this time let's use the postman tool in order to make our request and if you're not familiar with Postman, it's just like 
a GUI version of curl. It just helps us to test various URLs uh, that might be behind a uh, API or something. Now, in this case, we can't use the browser because the browser won't let us do a post. So this is why we're using Postman. But it's free to download. Um, so you can try it out. Now, before I execute it, I switch to a post request because that's what we're doing. Um, the root of the URL, and then you recall we had the V1 and then the profile. So then if we run this, we see the inserted string. So then these are grouped inside of here. But in addition to that, if we wanted to, we could provide an additional set of groupings or related functionality. So for example, here I put V1, but let's say time has passed. We need an updated version of the API, um, but we don't want to immediately kill the prior version for backwards compatibility purposes. So then we would create yet another service container, put in the new stuff in here with its own sub URL, um, change up whatever we wanted to here. So in other words, it does not have to be, you know, this, it could be whatever, and then have our own unique handlers in here to process the requests. So that was it. That was a quick introduction into how Actix Web is set up and the structure. So let's move on to the next section.